Today we're going to talk about how to get better low light videos and how to make your videos look the best way possible when shooting in low light situations. When it comes to gear we often hear people say gear doesn't matter but in these cases gear can make a huge difference. For example when shooting in low light situations you always want to make sure to keep your ISO at the base native ISO of your camera. This will help to prevent digital noise from occurring. And this is obviously easier when you have a camera with a dual native ISO like the Sony a7S III which has a dual native ISO at 12,800 than another camera that only has one native ISO. But with that being said, there's many different ways of making your footage in low light situations actually look incredibly crisp and super nice. To better understand how to get better low light shots, we firstly have to understand the exposure triangle, which consists out of aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And in short, the exposure triangle explains how much light is entering the sensor of your camera. As your ISO, like already mentioned, should always stay at the native ISO ISO of your camera, we can take this out of the equation and can focus on aperture and shutter speed. Aperture is mostly determined by which lenses are you using. If you're planning on shooting in low light or dark situations, I would highly advise to maybe use a lens with an f1.4 or f1.8 as this enables you to shoot in a wide open aperture. But personally, out of my experience, sometimes an f2.8 can be more than enough because I shoot all my dark or low light stuff in f2.8 as I don't even own an f1.4 or f1.8. The other variable that determines how much light enters the camera is the shutter speed. And in filmmaking we have a rule that's called the 180 degree shutter rule, which in other words means that your shutter speed should always be double the frame rate. For example, if you shoot in 25 FPS, your shutter speed should be 1 over 50. This rule makes sure that we have the most natural motion blur in our videos and our videos looking realistic and not too gimmicky. Understanding this rule and keeping this rule in mind will also help you to shoot better low light videos. I would advise to shoot always in 25 FPS because then you can keep your shutter speed at 1 over 50 instead of shooting in 50 FPS and having your shutter speed at 1 over 100 which would give you less light in your sensor and in your camera. So with all these technicalities aside, let's start to look into some more practical tips. And if you find yourself in a situation where you have a less ideal lighting situation or you're in a low light situation, it often can be very helpful to incorporate some external light sources. But that doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to bring in some huge soft boxes or some huge filmmaking lights. Sometimes the easiest way is to simply bring in some practical lights. For example, during our shoot with the fire performer, I simply asked Halen if he would be able to put down a fire torch on the ground and perform next to it. This already gave us enough light to make the scene look so much better and also made sure that there's no digital noise in the footage. And in my opinion, it might have even made the footage look so much better than an artificial light source because the fire was a natural light source and for specifically for this scene made it work much better than an artificial one. So if you can, try to use practical lights first before you will put in a big softbox or artificial light. This will make it so much easier to set up everything and make sure to give you enough light that you have enough light in your sensor to avoid digital noise in your camera and also make sure that your footage looks crisp and nice and gives you also overall the nice mood and vibe you were going for in the first place. So when shooting at night, the same concept as during the day applies. Available light is still gonna be the best light. So during the night, it's usually the moon and not the sun like during the day. But what I mean with that is that when you have flexibility of your shooting schedule, I would always highly recommend to put your shoots on a day where there's full moon and not new moon. For example, we had unfortunately no flexibility and had to shoot during a day where it was very dark because we had new moon. If you still have the problem that your location is way too dark and you want to change things up, one easy way is to use landlight power tubes. In my opinion, landlight power tubes are the perfect tool for indie filmmakers, running gun filmmakers, or even travel filmmakers. They're super small and compact and you can literally change the U to any U you wanted them to have and they're super bright. And the best thing is they run out of battery power. So you don't need any external power source and you don't need any generators or anything else to power the Nanlite power tubes. Another very important point to understand that you don't always have to perfectly expose your subject. Rather expose the scene than the subject. Light spaces and not faces like many people or any other filmmakers already mentioned multiple times before. And it's 100% accurate and true. And this is a technique your favorite movies constantly use to make the shots or scenes look so much more dramatic and cinematic. Yeah, I used the word cinematic, but when we talk about movies, that might be correct. 
If you somehow with all those tips still come home and have digital noise being present in your footage, I have a simple way of fixing this while the editing process. And one simple way to do so is using a denoiser. I personally like to use the built-in denoiser from DaVinci Resolve, which in my opinion works perfectly fine, but I feel like you can use any other denoiser and it will deliver similar results. The only thing you have to know when using a denoiser, it's usually very processor heavy and that's also the reason why I would apply it before exporting and not any earlier in the process of editing. I suck really in doing otters, so this is probably like, I guess, the 20th try now, but I just gonna say the typical basic stuff. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. I really hope you understand now better how to shoot in low light situations. And please, please, please leave a like. Subscription is even better, or leave a comment for future topics that I should cover. And I guess I see you in the next video. It was nice having you.